the 1997 Holy Ghost Tour starts at the Seven Hills Inn in Lenox, Massachusetts. Here is the inn, and that's Scott S. Quick's car. It's mid-afternoon, and we have about half of the cars here, I presume. That's Rudy Rosales working over there with Jim Stroman. There are some others. Jim Stroman is tapping away on his engine here. Grand Maid is playing a cornet. Unlike earlier days, there are some cars that are trailed. You're, you're okay on the on there. There's an unloading. Yes, both sides, okay. Nice car and a real boost of green. There it is. A few more cars have arrived. going to be cold. much light. I thought I'd come out and say goodnight to the cars. We are ready to start our first day of touring. 
the cars have all lined up there in good shape Jim Stallman's car is requiring a uh, jump start There's the wire. Bob Rod started his car right up. A little smoke. Last minute polishing. Hustle and bustle. Dick Miser is off. Followed by Bob. I'm riding in this Thompson car today. Oh, really? That's Nick Muller's fine car. Going to start. And the process is starting up. We're underway. First stop is the Shaker Village in Hancock. The car is on the parking lot. We are visiting the Hancock Shaker Village. The best known building is this round stone barn. This building is one of the main dwellings. Another view showing its depth. The laundry and machine shop. This is the Brethren workshop. The tannery. The ice house, the barn complex, the upper level of the round stone barn. This center post held up the roof. Another view of the exterior of the stone barn. Another view of the Brethren workshop. Well, we're having a, an ambulance or a police car go by. And this is the brick dwelling. Inside the brick dwelling, we find the common dining room. In the brick dwelling, there is also a meeting room. A final view of the round stone barn. It was built in 1826. Back in the parking lot, the cars make ready to continue our trip. We're underway once again. Now we're passing through some of the most beautiful parts of the Virgin Hill. We're in Williamstown now. There he is. 
is the main street of Williamstown. Bob Thompson's arriving. We're going to have lunch at Canterbury. Hud Fowler has found a parking space on the main street. G.G. Ballon is looking for a place to park. And Ben Boynton is parking right here on the main street. We've changed our mind. We're going to eat in Lickety Split. Lickety Split has started. This is the Thompson car in which I'm riding today. And we're going to depart Williamstown. in Vermont, and we're going to visit Hemmings, the publisher of the magazine about automobiles. This is our lineup of cars. Another view. Since my last visit here, Hemmings has moved to a new and larger building. Well, some people are departing. Well, Jim Stone has got it running nicely and is about to leave. Millard Newman is taking off. Storage is stuck. There's some kind of an engine problem. Here is the Will Burton Inn in Manchester, Vermont, where we will be staying tonight. We're on the top of Mount Equinox. Here's some of the mountains. A little haze. Our people and our cars. More of them over here. It's a little panoramic view. at our cars below me. We're having a little cocktail Say goodbye to these cars for the night. This is to be our third day of touring. Our cars aren't together, but here are a few. Jim Stroman is trying to start his car. Being jump started. Well, 
Well, it's running after a fashion. Today I'm going to ride with Hud and Wilma Fowler. Before starting at 10 o'clock. We've arrived at Hildane. This is the house that Robert Todd Lincoln built. And it was in the family until 1975. Our cars are lined up here. And here. Quite beautiful and gracious house. And here's the scenery around it. Another shot of our cars. Going to try the Townsend Corner store for something to eat for lunch. Here's what it looks like inside. And here's Wilma Fowler and Hud Fowler, who's driving me today. The little town of Townsend quite typical of New England, especially with its congregational church. I have proven to be a bad navigator. For some reason, we're on 63 North instead of 63 South. In North Brookfield, we stop at the Vintage Garage, Frank Cook's place. Splendid bunch of machinery. Another view. Frank has a museum. Here's one of the engines. Another one. I want to do like a display of carburetors. A nice collection of lights up here. I don't know. We used to have. We had some oversized pins made. Here's a car that's being worked on. You know whose it is? Um, a shop. Oh, that's his. A 20 horsepower engine. And with this shot, I'm going to stop shooting for the moment. at the public house in Sturbridge. We're settled into Sturbridge. Here's what it looks like with the cars below. Day of touring promises to be quite bright. Cars are being prepared. Today I'll be riding 
in this car belonging to Doug and Mary White. Oh, lovely car. Yeah. We read yesterday. Well, we're on the way. Doug and Mary in the front seat. Graham Mead has some kind of wheel or tire trouble. Refrain from this. Would you like commentary, <laughs> Harry? Well, if you'd like to comment on it, you might tell us what's <laughs> wrong. Have you got a dubbing device on the <laughs> We've arrived at Don and Ann Hare's place. <laughs> Here are the cars. <laughs> and of course, some wild tours. Somebody just drove right up the hill. We have a bagpiper here. The hares have a very lovely house. And here are the hare cars. And that was Press Blake. Below the house is a nice swimming pool. And then they have a view off here. We're having a box lunch under a tent. Reg and Susan Thompson are being a little more exclusive and sitting out in the sun. Another view of those at lunch. Okay, fine. Can we come in here? Going down to the car. Other munching people are outdoors. Yes, Marriott. The final view of the picnic. What car is that? Well, we're leaving now. We're in the field, and you can see how rough it is. We've returned to the scene of uh, Mead's disabled car. We've brought some lunch. Here are Barbara and Dawn with the box lunches. Now we've reached Mystic. We've arrived at our destination. We're going to stay in the Whaler's Inn. It's a complex of buildings. It runs around like this. And here are some of our cars. And others. The Mystic River Bridge is up, and here are the masts of a sailing vessel whose passage is being permitted. There's the stern of that sailing vessel. We're going uh, to take a steamboat down. ride, and here are some of our tourists walking up. We'll board the Sabina, and it's a real steamboat. Burns cold from the smoke. It looks like it's bituminous coal. She's docked in this area.
We're on our way, heading to the Mystic Bridge, and I believe we're going out into Long Island Sound. Here are some of the homes that mine the Mystic River. The Mystic Highway Bridge is going up to let us go through. This boat had to wait for us to go through. We're passing a sea of small boats. Notice the masts. It's a railroad bridge, which I guess is open most of the time and only closed when the train is about to use it. I presume these tracks are those of what used to be called the New York, New Haven, and Hartford. Our tourists enjoying themselves are in the sound area now. We have a very nice boat following us. We've turned around, and this piece of land out here is Fisher's Island. Quite fashionable and beautiful homes. We're heading into the Mystic River. We're getting back to our landing spot, and the bridge has gone up to let us through. And I'm going to add my video at this point. <laughs> Cars are being made ready to leave Mystic. Our destination tonight is Chester, Connecticut. Today I'm going to ride with Jim Ballon. Morris Franklin is getting ready to go. all the whites. We're on our way, leaving Mystic. Our first stop is Clyde's Cider Mill. Modesty Forts. He also has a 1927 dual cow Cadillac. Here is the engine that drives the cider mill. This all has to do with the pressing of the apples. Outside, we see another Model T Ford. Also a 1928 Dodge. And we're going to leave this nice spot. London, or Groton rather, to visit the Nautilus submarine. Here is the Nautilus, built in 1952 and commissioned in 1954. The submarine controls look like this. Dots 
on this map indicate the losses to the Japanese by submarine action of the U.S. This is a cover for the missile tube of a Poseidon missile. Underway again, and this time we're in New London. Well, we're running along the shoreline. We've entered Harkness Park, which is land given by the family to the state of Connecticut. Here's the house. It overlooks Long Island Sound. That land you see over there is either Block Island or part of Long Island. We're having lunch at the Hallmark. <laughs> well, here we are. Harry O'Connor's lunch stock. Oh, good, Harry. Did you have some a little banana nut? Oh, it's spilled, Harry. Eating an ice My cream compliments. Cone. Go get yourself an ice cream cone, Harry. Thank you. You're very well. Oh. This line is for free ice cream. Oh, that's all you need. Cross the Connecticut River. We're in Essex, Connecticut. aboard this train. In fact, car 503 has been reserved for us. Here we are on the train. It hasn't stopped. This is an old train. We're on the way. Along the way. We continue our journey now to the end of our run and deeper retreat. And as we began in 1912, it was completed over four years later at a cost of over a million dollars. This is the Connecticut River. We're going to take a ride on this boat. This is the Connecticut River. Well, we're now aboard. We're again. We're on the way. At that point, the train had taken over as a faster and more... Here's a cormorant drying its wing. You'll more than likely see more of these cormorants perched on marker number. And there's a swan over here to our right, our starboard side. We're running close to the shore of Selden Island. Gillette Castle. This was built by William Gillette, the famous actor, who's remembered best for Sherlock Holmes. Here's a pretty nice house. Give the green markers to his right as they read to his left. Gone to sleep. This is called the Good Speed Bridge. The Good Speed Opera House. Another view of the Good Speed Opera House. We aren't alone on this boat, but here are some of our packages. Thank you. 
isn't the only one who's gone to sleep. There's Morris Franklin. We've turned around and are heading downstream. The Gillette Castle is in a very prominent spot. Building up here is a home for boys. Well, we're now approaching our landing, and the train will be waiting for us. Once again, our group is on the train. Car number 503. We're underway again on the homeward journey. Moving right along. at our destination. This is the rear of the inn at Chester. <coughs> the main entrance of the Chester Inn or the Inn at Chester. Today is our last day of touring. Here are some of the cars getting ready. We're on our way again. I'm riding with Jim Bannon once again. Our first stop this morning is at Doug McGee's. Where we're going to view his collection of cars. Here are our cars lined up. Yeah, A Model T station wagon. I can't even guess what this little car is. A fire truck. Another one in fine shape. A nice Rolls. I believe it's a P1. You can see from these manners that Doug McGee has been around a bit. Tucked away in one corner of the barn is this lovely old locomobile. It looks like the engine has been redone. I want you to notice the wooden carrier for the wires. A Ford Model K.
another Model K, this one a Speedster. Yeah. The 1909 Model T. Another 1909 Model T. There are those three petals on the floor. A perfectly beautiful 1912 Pope Hartford. It has overhead valves. A Corbin Speedster. An enormous Hartford. This was built in Hartford, Connecticut. Another Pope Hartford. Beautifully restored. This Pope Hartford is vintage of 1903. No? 1901 Columbia. A 1904 locomobile in fine condition. I believe it's a two-cylinder engine. Here it is. I think its headlights are outstanding. A 1914 Trumbull, made in Bridgeport. This is a motorette. That's a lady's car. It only had three wheels and was chain driven. This big one is a compound. It was made in Middlefield, Connecticut. This is believed to be the oldest gasoline automobile in the United States. It was built in 1891. Now we're on our way again. This is Lake Aurora Mog. Lime Rock. Ahead of us is Scott Esquick. Ralph De Palma. Our baggage truck is now ahead of us. Just another shot. Now we're getting off. On the rear tire. Really? It looks as though we burned some rubber. Oh, dear. Here's the lineup of all cars for lunch. Our course on the main road going on the other one. Another group. After lunch, we have the opportunity.
admittedly our own cars don't go as fast, but they do drive very well when it comes right down to it. We're back in the Seven Hills Inn, having completed our tour. There's going to be much activity down here where the trailers are located. Jim Strowman has already gotten his car on his trailer. Mike Sierra's car is in its trailer. Millard Newman's car. I'm not sure how he transports it. This is pretty nifty. A motorhome towing a trailer with a Rolls Royce in it. Doug White hasn't put his car on a trailer yet because he wants it to shrink a little. This is after the long, long tour. And here it is, after it has shrunk and fit on the trailer. Not all cars are going on trailers, at least not at the moment. It is the piece de resistance to watch the loading of the Thompson a big car on this teeter tata type trailer. Here comes the car and it'll be aimed at the back. There it comes on and there it's it's supposed to drop. There it goes. Our farewell cocktail party is underway. The bar is quite busy too. The decibels are rising.
This really is the end. This is Harry O'Connor. I hope you've all enjoyed these tapes.